Now we are turning back to our top story, the earthquake in Turkey and Syria where the death toll continues to rise. It's dominating newspapers right around the world. Our press reviewer Deepti Gilero is here to take us through the reaction. Well, Sharon, let's start with the British papers. Two contrasting images really splashed across many of the British dailies today. This one from The Guardian here, you see that of a father's agony among the ruins. Uh, this uh, picture here, uh, as he holds the lifeless hand of his teenage daughter who was buried in the rubble from that earthquake, you see the grief and resignation really etched on his face. This was in the Turkish town of Karaman Maras, which the Times of London uh, in its article today describes as having been one of the most fastest growing cities in Turkey during its boom years. Now, of course, that future looking very different. The Times of London actually going with a, a, a different picture, but just as heartbreaking, this of a uh, newborn baby uh, in Syria where uh, who was found alive under the rubble. Um, it's believed she had been born uh, perhaps in the aftermath of the earthquake. Her family died, but she was found alive with the umbilical cord uh, still attached. Uh, so two very heartbreaking images that you'll find in the British papers today. Uh, the Turkish uh, paper Harriet Daily News, meanwhile, goes with a, a headline that really underpins the sentiment right now. Uh, a huge helplessness, it says, has really pervaded uh, Turkey and Syria uh, in the wake of that uh, earthquake, Sharon. And the quake occurring, Dupti, obviously in a part of Syria that's already been battered by 12 years of civil war. Well, a region that has been uh, successive, uh, that has been hit by successive uh, tragedies. Uh, that's uh, what the Spanish daily El País says in this article here. The civil war, of course, that was raging uh, for the past 12 years has killed almost half a million people, left six and a half million people homeless. This uh, <laughs> added to the COVID pandemic as well as a cholera outbreak in recent times and the fallout from Lebanon's economic crisis. This region of Syria has been extremely hard hit. Uh, the news magazine, the U.S. news magazine Foreign Policy says uh, adding to that is this nightmare situation now in the in the wake of this earthquake uh, where uh, uh, Russian troops forced two of the three border crossings in the region to be to close using its veto power at the U.N. Security Council, which means that uh, getting humanity aid into this region will be very difficult now because there is only one cross-border crossing. So it really makes all the humanitarian efforts uh, all, all the more difficult. That's what foreign policy says. Uh, finally, you have the Swiss paper Tribune de Genève, which uh, says that there could be some sort of political jostling in the wake of this earthquake, notably um, uh, the paper's fears that Syrian President Bashar al-Assad could take advantage of the situation to force the West to uh, lessen its sanctions, or alleviate its sanctions, uh, which have hit, in particular, medical and food supplies in the region. Moving to the US now, Deep Tea, where you've been looking at some reaction to Joe Biden's State of the Union address. Yeah, a lot of brutal reactions from the conservative press today, Sharon. This is from the Wall Street Journal, the State of the Union contradiction, it says, uh, the editors here say. They ponder why uh, uh, Joe Biden has, if he's, uh, well, they ponder why if John, Joe Biden has done so much for America, well, uh, why doesn't most of America seem to uh, appreciate it or him? Well, it's explained as being the, quote, contradiction that's really stalked his presidency. The big issue being that Joe Biden's legislative victories uh, haven't delivered the benefits that he promised, notably uh, in uh, reducing inflation or improving uh, purchasing power of ordinary Americans. Now, the Washington Examiner is, is even more brutal in its uh, editorial today, this conservative paper here, calling it a banal failure of a state of the union, uh, describing Biden's speech as sanctimonious, a, quote, laundry list of nanny statism, adding that the best thing to be said about this was that a record, uh, was that a record low number of people wasted their time watching his speech. I'm quoting, of course, from the Washington Examiner. One man who hasn't been wasting his time, it's LeBron James. He's beaten a four-decade-old record. He's now the most prolific scorer in NBA history. That's right, and he's definitely cemented his reputation as an NBA GOAT uh, greatest of all time. He surpassed Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record, which was actually set in 1984, the same year that 
LeBron James was born. Uh, this is uh, the front of the Los Angeles Times here, going with a, a really beautiful uh, illustration there that uh, really encapul encapsulates the uh, immensity of what he's achieved. This is uh, the NBA's Twitter um, uh, tweet as soon as that record uh, was uh, broken by LeBron James. And in fact, there's a little video you can see that moment when it happened here. And uh, it was actually in the third quarter. Uh, 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 the game actually stopped as soon as he broke that record. Of course, LeBron James's family was there, as well as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, uh, photographers rushing onto the court to congratulate LeBron James and to capture this moment. That's Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. The Lakers actually lost their game to uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder, but clearly the night was all about one man, LeBron James, Sharon. But is he the greatest player of all time? That's perhaps what Michael Jordan fans might be asking. Deep T, thanks so much for the press review. That's Deep T Laurent.